All right, hey everybody, Renzo here. And today we are taking a look at two early books from the artist Yasushi Nirasawa, Fantastic Creature World and Creature Core. And for those of you who don't know, uh, Yasushi Nirasawa was uh, an artist, sculptor, character designer, monster maker, um, who unfortunately passed away in 2016, but through, um, through his entire career, he designed creatures for books, video games, movies, TV. He's a contemporary of Keita Amamiya, Katsuya Tarada, and uh, Takeyuki Takia. In fact, I think the whole bunch of them went to the same art school. He's worked on the Kamen Rider series, Garo. Uh, he's done work for the Soul Calibur video games. And he's he was really one of the great Japanese like monster illustrators. And today we're taking a look at uh, two books of his from pretty early on in his career. Uh, he got a start as a assistant for Makoto Kobayashi. That's Dragon's Heaven Makoto Kobayashi, not What's Michael Makoto Kobayashi. And um, he was a contributor for uh, magazines like Hobby Japan, Hobby Japan EX, and various uh, RPG magazines at the time. This is like early, late 80s, early 90s. And that's where you see a lot of his monster work in Fantastic Creature World. So this is basically kind of like a monster manual, like you would see in Dungeons and Dragons or uh, Call of Cthulhu. And throughout we have all these different monsters and stats on them. Uh, I don't think these were for any specific uh, game or campaign that I know of. This is pretty early on in uh, Nirasawa's career. And you can tell he's really, you know, looking at a lot of, like, uh, high fantasy art. Like, kind of like your, you know, your Frank Frazetta's. But I, I see, like, I definitely see a bit of Mike Plug in uh, Nirasawa's work. Sort of like the bony little details and other, you know, kind of odd shapes of them. And one of the sort of hallmarks of his designs is everything is very asymmetrical. Like, this one is symmetrical, but other times you'll see creatures have, like, sort of these lopsided, like, one arm is way larger than the other, or certain parts will be, like, impossibly elongated. But yeah, this is Japan circa, you know, 1988, so, like... What are the big titles right now? It's like Kimaguri, Orange Road, Dragon Ball, and this is very removed from that world. But at the same time, there is like an increased interest in uh, horror and the occult going on. This is around the same time you have Wicked City coming out. You got the uh, Megami Tensei uh, novels and video games. Hideyuki Kikuchi is also putting out Vampire Hunter D around this time. This are, around this time, you also have, like, RPGs. You know, JRPGs are just kind of becoming a thing in Japan. You know, Final Fantasy is, like, what? That's 1986, I want to say? Um, so they're looking at things like wizardry and other, like, Western RPGs. And I think that's uh, a bit where these, like, you know, creature designs sort of come from. I think it's Nirasawa putting his own sort of unique spin on like you know the western sort of monster manuals and rpgs at the time see here this is very much a hallmark sort of asymmetrical creature design from the Urasaw. he loves giving people like one giant claw it's like can i have two like no you got one giant claw Nirasaw even contributed designs to the Men in Black movie. I'm not sure if you remember at the end of the film, like the giant cockroach monster, but he did sort of like his own take on that. Like he designed it in the concept art phase. And it was something way more fantastical initially looking. It was something more like this, that really like scary looking with very long gangly limbs and claws and stuff. And 
Then the movie finally came out. They're like, eh, it's, it's just, let's just make it a giant cockroach. And it's just not nearly as cool. Uh, he did also contribute some designs to uh, the movie Space Truckers. If you remember that. that? That used to got played on like HBO at like 1 a.m. back in the day. But yeah, Nirasawa has this sort of design sensibility. It's hard to uh, describe it exactly, but it's very, I would call it like Baroque, where there's like tons of minute little details. It's really very overall. I, you got to wonder how long it took him to draw one of these illustrations, never mind sculpt something like it. I mean, you can definitely tell this is playing into the sort of era in Japan where like Western horror movies and sci-fi are getting really popular because you can definitely see, you know, shades of the thing in this, the 1980s, the blob. Nothing is, nothing is sleek. Everything is very like gangly and organic. This one feels like almost uh, kind of like Ray Harryhausen, but almost... Uh, H.P. Lovecraft a little bit because he describes sort of like abominable snow creatures, but like as very weird, hairy, but also insect-like monsters. This is right around the same time that like you have like a lot of uh, Cthulhu world like RPG manuals and Hideyuki Kikuchi is putting out like Cthulhu themed novels and things like that. This one's just called Thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a wild guess and think that he was uh, influenced by the Carpenter movie. But he was, this is more like the sword and sorcery version of that monster rather than the science fiction version. The next book we're going to look at is uh, Creature Core. Now this one is, the other book was almost entirely illustrations. This one's a lot more um, figure and sculpting focused. Uh, this is compro this is mostly made of uh, articles and pieces that he did for Hobby Japan magazine. So different sort of like monster sculptures and these are, you know, scratch built, kind of kit bashed sometimes and like his own like unique designs. And let's take a look. See, this is what I'm talking about. Like in Fantastic Creature World, we have like all these, you know, very intricately done illustrations. And now like years later, he's taking those illustrations and translating them to sculptures. And a lot of these are also put out as uh, garage kits from uh, future models. This is his character, Nina Delono, and she kind of appears in um, sort of an ongoing comic that he did. Um, she's also like sort of like his mascot. And the comic was called uh, Phantom Core, and it also ran alongside issues of like Hobby Japan. And this is sort of an early version of her. This is sort of uh, an example of his ability to uh, kind of kit bash and stuff, because here we have like all different like objects and tools, like they sort of puts together just to make like you know what what would Nina's like utility belt basically be like. I think that's what separates uh, Nirasawa from a lot of um, illustrators and sculptors. I think because of his background with sculpting, his illustrations have like a sort of tactile and functional like feature to it. Like things are very like strange and almost impossible looking, but there's a structure to them. Everything sort of interlocks and interconnects and functions. These one definitely, these designs definitely sort of play into like a sort of a Clyde Barker, Hellraiser sort of aesthetic. Like it's basically Francis Bacon on steroids. This is the creature exhibition section. This is a lot of what ran in uh, Hobby Japan magazine. Like here's his uh, sort of interpretation of Common Rider which is a much more like weird and monstrous looking rather than like a guy in like a cricket, instead of a guy in a cricket themed like motorcycle helmet, it's like what if Kamen Rider is more like a cricket monster. And you see some of that in um, Shin Kamen Rider or Masked Rider Shin. And now you can actually watch that officially in the United States, or at least for now. 
Chrysalis Collector. I think this is supposed to be like his uh, interpretation of uh, Inazuman. Here's his uh, oh, figure he did of uh, Winslow from Phantom of the Paradise. And he sort of like would do like another sort of interpretation of this, but as like a sexy girl for a series of uh, action figures he did in the late, late 90s, early 2000s, I want to say. And that pops up again if you watch uh, the anime Hells. This is uh, art he did for the Sega Genesis game, Beast Warriors. Um, I wanna say, I, I'm not sure if it got uh, a US release or not, but it's some pretty cool monster designs from him. I think the sculpture was used as like box art on the Genesis, but uh, from what I hear, not that good of a video game, but Look up some of the artwork. I'm sure there's some playthroughs of it on uh, YouTube. Here we have some of his illustrated work. And you can tell this is slightly ahead of the stuff that we saw in Fantastic Creature World because now he's going into colored illustrations. But this is still early on. Like this one of this illustration, Nina, feels like a little rougher. But I like the, you know, the sort of composition in this Goblin Lunch one. This ran in Hobby Japan Extra. I wonder how he did the colors for this, because this Nina one looks like colored pencils, and some of these other ones look like airbrush. This is definitely a very sort of airbrushed look to it. Oh, no, it says right here, it's uh, colored pencils and colored ink on paper. This is a lot of that sort of, you know, strange sort of like everything, the mechanical and the organic constantly converge with each other in Nirasawa's world. And I think that's what makes his work distinct. Like, you don't know where mechanical things begin and organic things end. They all sort of, you know, play into each other. And that gives his stuff, like, sort of a very, you know, gothic look. Goth in both the uh, ball goth terms of let's have everything be very cool and edgy and gothic in the classical sense of, you know, Baroque cathedrals with, you know, minute details on gargoyle sculptures. And these are, these are really great books. They're, they're worth tracking down. I think they, uh, in the aftermarket, they typically range somewhere in like 30 to $40, maybe a little more depending on uh, condition and whether or not the books come with their original obis. But, um... For a great example of a really exemplary uh, illustrator, uh, you should definitely check these books out.